hello everyone uh, this is Ali al here um, today I will give you a, a presentation or short presentation about the international law and justice it is very important a topic today because it um, it touch a very important um, issue that the, um, the the whole international community has to uphold the international law and justice because without international law and justice we will have a chaotic in the world and therefore we couldn't find we will not be able to solve our problem or to address our problem such as a armed conflict or dispute between a state therefore a international law has to has to address this sort of issue okay so my I presentation it has been divided into a, a six a parties. The first part is I will be talking to you about the the definition of the uh, international law and how is the um, the international law is differ or different from the uh, national law. Um, okay, then I will talk to you about the second part, which is a uh, the achievement of the international law. How how the um, the international community went far in terms of the um, of, uh, of the international law. The, sec the third part is about the uh, general assembly as a uh, forum, or the um, forum means the um, they have the uh, the place where the people can uh, discuss uh, a different issue or treaties, and it says uh, what, what what they call it here adopting uh, multilateral treaties. The fourth part is about the uh, development and, and codification of international law. Development and codification of international law. Um, in this part, I will be talking about the uh, following uh, issue. The first one about the International Law Commission, and the second one about the uh, international humanitarian law. And the third part is about the rule of law. And the uh, fifth part is going to be about judicial settlement of dispute. And the last one is going to be about the international criminal justice. And the last part of this um, a, um, a short presentation is going to be about resource. I have placed a useful resource for uh, people who are interested to get more information about international law and justice. Okay, if you are ready, uh, Let's get started. The first slide, as I said, is about the um, what is international law, the definition of the um, international law, and, and how is uh, different from the um, uh, national law or national or the uh, state law. Okay, the definition it says here: yeah, international law is the set of rules generally regarded and accepted as binding in relation between state and between nations. So um, the international law basically is regulate the um, the uh, the relationship between state and between the um, international organization. So if there is any dispute or uh, disagreement between nation or between international organization, the inter the the um, the, uh, the the party has to has to um, has to go back to the international law and say, and they find and they should find out what the international says. International law says about their dispute. So this is a civil, um, a civil way how to solve their problem. So we are not going to use any force. So we are not going to uh, threaten the other party by using force or something like that. No, we are going to use a civil way to solve our problem. So it says here, it it serves as framework for the. Uh, for the parties of a stable and organized international relation. So international law is different or different, different from the um, state-based legal system in that it is I primarily I, uh, applicable to uh, countries rather than to private citizens. So national law may become international law or international law could be or be, could be or become part of the uh, national law when the um, when treaties delegate national jurisdiction to a supranational 
a tribunal such as European Court of Human Rights or the International Criminal Court. So the treaty such as the Geneva Convention may require a national law to conform to conform to a, a representative or a respective part. So the, as I said earlier, as I mentioned basically um, the international law can be a can become a part of the uh, uh, of the national law if um, if the uh, if the international law become part of the uh, uh, national law as I mentioned this example of the European uh, Court of Human Rights and the International Criminal Court so the countries there uh, who they are binding themselves with the um, with the uh, with this law or convention should uh, uh, make this uh, law part of their uh, national law. All right. Okay, the second slide is about slide is about the achievement of international law. How what how the um, the international community how far they they went in terms of a uh, international law. It says here among the greatest achievement of the United Nations is the uh, development of a, a body of international law convention, treaties, and standards central to prompting economic and social development, as well as the um, to advancing international peace and security. Many of the uh, treaties brought about by the United Nations from the uh, basis of the uh, law that govern relation among nations. So while work of the United Nations in this area does not always receive attention, it has daily impact on the life of people everywhere. Initially, what they try to let other people understand that the international law has went so far and they have achieved uh, many things in terms of treaties, in terms of peace and security, and in terms of prompting economic and social development. And in term, and all this achievement has a, 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 a positive impact on the lives of people everywhere, even though if you cannot feel it. But when you feel peace and security, that's why that's that, that's because of the uh, international law when you feel there is development in terms of economic and there is um, social development that's why because the state has implement or apply the uh, the basic or the principle of international law within the countries all right we're still talking about the achievement of international law and right now we have to talk about the charter of the united nations specifically calls on the um, organization to help in the uh, in the settlement of international dispute between uh, by uh, um, uh, peaceful means that I was talking about in the uh, first slides and that's including arbitration 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 you know, you know for example if there is a dispute between two states uh, the other country maybe become to involve or to um, uh, you know give like a good good uh, good good offer to uh, to solve this problem between the two state or good office i mean so and judicial settlement article 33 of the uh, of the united nations of chart of the united nations and to encourage the uh, progressive uh, to progress uh, progressive development of international law and to it is a uh, uh, codification articles uh, uh, 13 of the uh, chart of the united nations so over the years, more than uh, 560 multilateral treaties have been uh, deposited with the uh, Security Journal of the United Nations. Many other treaties um, are, are, are deposited also within the uh, government, go government or others in Taiti. So the treaties cover a, a broad range of subjects, matters such as a human rights, disarmament and protection of the environment. So international law or the international community has made a, a great achievement in terms of a um, uh, international law. So the more uh, the more um, 
for example, if the, the, uh, the state around the world apply the international law or uphold the international law, uh, the more the, 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 the world will become a, um, a better place to live because they will, they will be a peaceful, not so there is no compromise. So every state has to apply uh, all the covenant that being binding by the uh, by international law. So, um, General Assembly, as a forum for adopting multilateral treaties, the General Assembly is composed of a representative for uh, from each member state of the United Nations, and it and is the main uh, deliberative body uh, on matter relating to international law relating to international law. So, no, so there is many many uh, multi, uh, multi multilateral treaties are in fact adopted by the General Assembly and subsequently open for the uh, uh, signature and ratification. So the Legal Six uh, Committee assist, assist the work of the General Assembly by uh, providing advice on substantive re uh, legal matters. So the committee is also made up of the uh, representative um, from all members state of the United Nations. Okay, um, also the General Assembly has a adopted number of uh, multilateral treaties through it, uh, through the history, um, that including so that many um, uh, treaties have been uh, signed and ratified by a uh, many states. And right now here I have list the most important treaties as um, been achieved by the international um, international law uh, since 1948. So the first convention is the um, Convention on Prevention and Punishment of Crime of Genocide 1948, uh, International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination 1965, International Convention on Civil and Political Rights 1966, International Convention on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights 1966, uh, convention on, on, on the uh, elimination or reduce uh, of all forms of discrimination against women, against women, 1979, United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, 1982, uh, Convention on the Right of the Child, 1989, and Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, 19, 1996. And the last and not last one, but the International Convention for the uh, uh, Suppression of uh, Financial of Terrorism, 1999. Also, there is other convention is the called International Convention for the uh, Suppression of Act of Nuclear, nuclear uh, Terrorism, 2006. Convention on Right of Person with Disability, uh, 2006. Um, and the and the uh, the one before last one is the United Nations Convention on Contract for International Carriage of Good, wholly or partly, or partly by sea, 2008. And the last one is op uh, optional uh, pr protocol to the International Convention on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, 2008. So this is a um, a great a achievement in terms of international law. And it says here in many areas that the legal work of the United Nations has been uh, pioneering, you know, pioneering, addressing a problem as um, they take on international uh, dimension. So the United Nations has a a a, um, a crucial role in terms of a um, to be like a leader or forefront uh, of effort to provide legal framework in such areas. As protection, the environment, uh, regulation, migrant, migrant labor, uh, curbing drug trafficking, and and combating combating terrorism, or fighting terrorism, this will continue today, as international law I assume a more uh, central role across central role across a wider um, area of issue, including human rights law. And international humanitarian law. All right, we still uh, talk about the development and codification of international law. So here I'm going to talk about some 
uh, mechanism or policies about the um, in terms of um, the uh, international law um, and codification development. The first one is going to be about the International Law Commission. So the International Law Commission is the um, is the was established or founded by uh, founded by the General Assembly in 1947. To so so the reason uh, the main reason of the, um, of this International Law Commission is to prompt the uh, progressive development of international law and its codification. So the commission is composed of 34, 34 members who collectively uh, represent the world principal legal system and serve expert in their individual capacity, not a representative of their government. It has to be uh, independent, in not dependent to their country. So they address a wide range of issues uh, relevant to the um, regulation of uh, relation among state and frequently consult with the International uh, Committee of the Red Cross and the International Court of Justice and the United Nations Specialized Agency depending on the subject being examined. So it depends what subject that they use or discuss, they have to uh, discuss with the specialized agency uh, within the uh, United Nations. So most of the commission's works involve the uh, preparation of draft, draft on aspect of international law. So um, some of the topic has been chosen by the commission, other are referred to the um, by the uh, General Assembly. So when the, um, the commission complete work on topic, the General Assembly sometimes uh, convince uh, an international international conference of uh, of controllers uh, um, to in incorporate the draft into a convention. So this is the uh, main role of the um, uh, international commission or, or the international law commission. Okay, if in some time the you know the uh, the convention on the non 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 um, uh, navigation ish um, uses of international uh, water water courses adopted by the general assembly in 1997 uh, which regulate the um, uh, the equitable and reasonable utilizing of water course shared by the two or more countries the Convention on the Law of Treaties between state and international organization or between international organization adopted at the uh, uh, conference in Vienna 1986. The Convention on the uh, sex, uh, Succession of States is a uh, respect of state property, archive and debate. So adopted to the um, to a conference in Vienna, 1983, the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Crime against against international um, international internationally protected person, including diplomatic agents, adopted by the uh, Geneva Assembly in 1973. Okay, let's talk about this is a part of the um, international or development and codification international law. So the first one it was about international commission of international law and the second one is going to be about the um, international humanitarian law. It's very important and very crucial. It's very it's extremely important. International humanitarian law encompasses the uh, principle and rules that regulate the mean and method of uh, warfare, as well as the humanitarian protection of civilian population, sick and wounded uh, combatants, and, and prisoner of war. Um, major instrument, including the 1990, 1949 Geneva Convention for the uh, protection of war victim and, and two addition, additional uh, protoc protocols uh, concluded in 1977 under the uh, um, under the uh, convention or the International Committee of the Red Cross. The United Nations has taken a leading role in effort to advance international humanitarian law, the security 
Council has become increasingly involved in protection, civilian and armed conflict, prompting hum human rights and protecting children in war. All right, the third one is going to be the rule of law. As you know, I spoke about this topic before and I said the rule of law is very important in terms of peace and security, in terms of um, development, in terms of um, in terms of everything, in terms of fighting HIV, AIDS, in terms of fighting the poverty, hunger. So rule of law is quite important. Prompting, it says here, the text says, prompting the, ru the rule of law at the national and international levels is at the uh, heart of the United Nations mission. So establishing respect for the rule of law is fundamental to achieving a a durable peace in the which means continue peace after mass or after conflict the uh, effective protection of human rights and to uh, sustain economic progress and development so the principle the principle that everyone from the individual to state itself is accountable to law that are a uh, public publicly um, from publicly prom, uh, promulgated, equally enforced, and independently educated is a fundamental concept which um, drives much of the United Nations works. So, in terms of state, national or international, the uh, rule of law is very important. It can apply to all the states around the world, and it can apply to all the um, the uh, international organization and regional organization. Rule of law is a crucial and is very important um, to have a stability and to have a, um, a uh, what they call it, a, um, a peace and security. Okay, a, um, the rule of law. So responsibility for the overall coordination of rule of law works by the United Nations system. Um, rest system rest with the uh, with the rule of law coordination and resource groups so the uh, rule of law is very important as i said this is you know this old text just i is back up what i'm saying right now is rule of law is very important so a member of the group are the uh, principle of 20 united nations entities engaged in supporting member state to strengthen the rule of law. So providing support from uh, headquarters of the, uh, to the rule of law activities at the uh, national level, the Secretary General designed the uh, Department of uh, Peacekeeping Operation and the United Nations Development Program and the joint global um, uh, vocals, you know, all, all, all of us, we have to put all the, all the international communities with their voice together and uh, work and support and uphold the international law in terms of uh, rule of law. All right, we're still in the uh, development and codification of international law. So the first one is going to be about the judicial settlement of dispute, International Court of Justice. So this is the reason, the reason of um, that found International uh, Court of Justice that to find solution for the um, dispute between a state or between uh, international organization. And it says here, the primary United Nations organ for the settlement of dispute is the International Court of Justice, also known as the World Court. It was, it was found on 1946. Since it is uh, founding, the court has considered over 160 cases, including um, issues, mem um, numbers, judgment on dispute brought to, to it. So by state and issued um, advisory opinions in the uh, respond to request by the United Nations organization. Most cases have been uh, dealt with the, uh, with the full court by, but since 1981, six cases have been referred to a special chamber at the uh, uh, request of the uh, parties. So this is the main, um, this is the main uh, role of the um, uh, International Court of Justice to uh, find solution for the problem that uh, can raise between a, um, 
between a uh, state or international organization. All right, we're still about the, uh, we're talking about the development and codification of international law. So right now we're talking about the, uh, let's talk about the International Criminal Justice Tribunal and ICC for, so basically when we talk about the International Criminal Justice, we talk about the tribunal phase, the first part, and the second part is going to be ICC, which means it's done on, stand for I International Criminal Court. So let's talk about tribunal first. And it says here, after the Second World War, uh, the Nuremberg, um, you know, this is, you know, a court, or it was in um, in Japan, Tokyo. Uh, Nuremberg and Tokyo and Tokyo trials. This is two 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 trials have addressed war crime, crime against crime against peace and crime against humanity committed during the uh, Second World War. So the ad hoc tribunal and the um, United Nations assisted tribunal have continued to uh, contribute to uh, combating immunity and prompting accountability for most serious crime. Yes, we will talk about what, what's going on in my mind sometime very soon. So in the 1990s, after the end of the uh, Cold War, the International Cr uh, Criminal Tribunal for the uh, former Yugoslavia, ICTY, and the uh, and the and for the Rwanda, ICTR, were established to try crime committed within a specific time frame and during a specific conflict. This applies as well to um, to three courts established by the uh, state uh, concerned, but substantial United Nations support being supported by the, the other three the other three courts that I'm going to talk about you later just in a second. So it says here the first one is the Special Court for Sierra Leone 2000, the extraordinary chamber in the Court of Cambodia 2006 as well and the Special Tribunal for Lebanon, 2006. So this is the, third, this is the three uh, courts that's been, or tribunal being supported by the United Nations. But the first one, the first two of them uh, for the Yugos, uh, uh, former Yugoslavia and the other one for Rwanda, being uh, established by the United Nations to get these people who commit a very severe crime to be to stand before the court. Crimes such as war crime, crime against humanity, and, and genocide. So I'm not quite sure if this court have achieved their goal or not, but um, the two areas right now is in Rwanda and former Yugoslavia, there is no, so after the mass killing or the genocide, I think the country, the two countries has become, has come to, to peace and settlement and they uh, still continue so we haven't heard anything back yet but uh, we 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 wish or we hope that the um the tribunal can do their their uh, their duty to prevent uh, any any further bloodshed okay the second one in terms of a um in terms of uh, international criminal justice is the uh, international uh, criminal court in the uh, permanent one, uh, the idea of the uh, of a permanent international court to you know prosecute crimes against humanity was very considered at the United Nations in the uh, uh, context of adoption of the Genocide Convention of 1948. So the international community has thought about this about this court for long time for long time ago, but they put it off for so long too. So it says here, yeah, for many years, differences of opinions, you know, it forced further development, it stopped further development since 1948. Because there is many, many opinions, that's why they delay uh, to, found the, uh, to find the International Criminal Court. So it should be since 1948, actually, but they put it off for, for that long. So in 1992, the General Assembly directed the International Law Commission to prepare a draft 
status of such court the mass the mass the mass killing or the mass craze in Cambodia in some in the 70s the former Yugoslavia in the 90s and Rwanda in the 90s as well made that the need of it for it even more urgent so actually the internal committee they shouldn't they shouldn't wait that long to you know to find the international criminal court anyway the international criminal court icc has a jurisdiction to prosecute individuals who commit genocide war crime and crime against humanity it will also have jurisdiction over the crime of aggression when agreement is reached i think it reached already on the uh, definition of such crime the international criminal court is legally and functionally independent from the united nation and is not part of the united nation okay so the uh, the cooperation between the united nation and the international criminal court governed by the uh, negotiation negotiated relationship agreement the security council can initiate a proceeding before the international criminal court and can refer the international criminal court a situation just like the um, situation in darfur that would not otherwise fall under the uh, court jurisdiction the court has 18 judge elected by the state parties for the term limited to nine years except that judge shall remain in office to complete any trial or, or appeals which has already begun no two judge can be from the same countries or from the same country i mean all right this is all about the uh, international international law and justice i guess i gave you a brief information about it so if somebody interested or someone someone is specialized in international law in general please feel free to go to one of these uh, sources these resources very useful resources and there's free information there there is uh, uh, books there is um um, you know there is um, a useful information and knowledge about international law so hopefully that uh, very useful for you thank you so much for listening and i will be talking to you sometime very soon thank you for that bye